Hi guys, well, why did I clap so loud? Hi guys, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video. It is so lovely to see you even though I cannot see anyone except myself in the reflection of this lens, which is making me very nervous. <laughs> I have a pretty fun video planned for you guys today. As you would have been able to tell by the title, it is going to be a plant-packed video. This video is sponsored by Lauren at North Shore Tropicals. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, she kind of just gave me free reign to run around her new greenhouse. She invited Alice and I to come to the shop and to show you all the plants she has in the store and in her warehouse right now. And we both did a little haul. So yeah, it should be a pretty fun video if you're just wanting to see some pretty plants. But with that said, Lauren is now shipping to the United States, which is huge for her. This is something she's wanted to do for a while now and it's finally come to fruition. So I am very, very proud of you, Lauren, and her plants are amazing. So if you are in the United States and you're not comfortable with shipping from overseas or you've been hesitant to order from somewhere that's super, super far away, I feel like Lauren is probably your best bet. You know, we're just in Canada, just north of the border. Um, she acclimatizes everything. You'll be able to see all of that in the footage that I'm gonna roll. The first part of this video is gonna be from a few weeks ago when I went to her greenhouse. Uh, it was a very rainy, sorry, it was a very rainy day, it was very cold that day and kind of gloomy. There was a lot of noise in the greenhouse, so I decided to just mute it. I was talking the whole time, but the fans were so loud, the rain was so loud, just it was, it was too crazy and chaotic, so I just muted the whole thing, but I'm just going to show you some highlights from the greenhouse. Keep in mind, they're still sort of in this weird like growing pain stage of their greenhouse. They moved in not too long ago, so it's not completely filled yet. They're still trying to get like conditions set and they've had lots of casualties and again, just a lot of growing pain. So I'm not gonna be showing you the entire greenhouse, but I will be showing you most of it. So once we are done at the greenhouse, we're going to jump into, gosh, it's so hard to get my timelines right. I think last week um, when I was at the shop with Alice and you guys will be able to get a good idea of what's available in store right now, what she's acclimatizing in her warehouse, things that you might be able to expect to see on the website in the near, in the near future. And then I also gave you guys a peek at some of her personal collection and yeah her plants are amazing i'm gonna take you guys to the greenhouse and then i guess i'll meet you at the end
So Alice is currently filming in the warehouse, so I'm gonna be out here in the shop for a little bit. Uh, as you can see, she has a ton of plants right now, but I just wanna show you some highlights. Um, of course, some being philodendron myoi. I know that some of you guys mentioned after I posted my myoi, gosh, oh, it would have been on Instagram. Um, some people asked if she had more, and yes, she does. They're not as big, but they are big. They're still a very, very good size in terms of the leaf, um, the leaf size. And you could get two of them together. And you guys, they're only $65 Canadian. You can't beat that. For this size, you really can't. People have been selling props for like, I don't know, like $40 or something, like little tiny, tiny cuttings. So this is a really good deal. And if you put three together, <laughs> Okay, now I'm just kidding. Um, I'm only going to be able to talk out here because it's silent, but back there, um, there's people back there, there's music playing, so I won't be able to talk, but I'll just pull plants, I'll just pull plants out and just kind of show you guys some of the cool plants she's got. I'll throw up the name as well. Um, but yeah, I can talk out here. Oh, I wanted to show you this one. Oh, not this one. This is the Anthuria Moroquianum Esmeralda. I have been wanting one of these, but I don't want one as big. I really want one um, as a smaller specimen so that I can grow it in my conditions and not stress about like losing a lot of leaves. But these are beautiful. I feel like depending on where you buy it, they can look very... It can look very variable. Um, like they all look kind of look a little bit different. But yeah, this one is amazing. Is it okay to turn down the music a, a tiny bit? Oh, yeah. Okay. Alexa, turn Thank it off. you. Here is another shop highlight. This one is an Anthurium Roquianum. So big and beautiful. This is this is still one of my favorite Anthuriums. Of all time but oh let me put it next to the Esmeralda so ugh. definitely different but still similar um, this one is a darker uh, green color whereas this one is a little bit lighter this leaf is a lot wider I would say it's not as narrow why am I vibrating Oh, that's an escaped root. What is happening? Mm. If you guys have been wanting a king of spades, she does have some and they're very healthy. Very cute. I think that she has some smaller ones as well growing. This one is 275 Canadian, which is less than what I paid for my import, I think. Um, so this is a really good price. And look how round and cute this leaf is. What's another one I want to show you? Pulled out some Hoyas. So this one is Hoya Crassipetiolata. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, Hoya Crassipetiolata, <laughs> I think. I love this reptilian look. It's so pretty. And this one is so bushy and it is... $39.99 for this big old bush. And then there's this one, a Hoya Glabra. That is so big. So nice. It looks like a dinner plate. The leaves aren't as stiff as I thought they would be, but has a very, very nice texture. And this one is $39.99 Canadian. I have more Hoyas. This one is a Hoya Rangsin. Rangsin? It's super splashy. I'm not really into the splashy ones, but this one is really nice. Um, and this one is $39.99. This is a Hoya Crassi Petiolata Splash. So like the other one I showed you, but splashy. And the splash on this is really, really cool. And it's got like almost black venation. So interesting. Hoya Num... Num... <laughs> Numal, numularoids, numularoids. These ones are so freaking fuzzy and amazing. 
Seriously, if you are into fuzzy plants and coin-like plants, you gotta get one of these. This one is $29.99 Canadian, remember. I think that might be all that I want to show you guys in the shop. So I'm going to head into the back and show you uh, stuff that's for sale. And then I think at the end, I'll roll some shots of some of her own collection that isn't for sale, but that I think you guys might enjoy seeing. Are you ready to show me your favorite plant? Yeah. Okay. My favorite plant is that one. How about you stand next to it so you can show how big it is compared to your body? They're like as long as his legs. To be fair, they're like as long as my legs too. <laughs>
welcome back. How's everyone feeling? Everyone okay? <laughs> I certainly was not okay after those two days of filming. It's just, it's kind of an incredible feeling to be just surrounded by plants every day and just literally just be in a sea of aeroids. It's, it really is like amazing. It's so serotonin inducing. Her um, shop slash warehouse is like a sauna. I swear like ever since I went there, my pores have just been like, they're so, I feel like I'm like glowing because I just, yeah, it was like being in a sauna for a couple hours. But anyway, yeah, like as fun though, as it was to just be surrounded by plants, I'm gonna tell you right now, I could not do what she does. There's no way. Uh, you know, being surrounded by plants is one thing, but having to care for them is another thing. And you know, I have been struggling with pests lately and I just can't imagine the stress that she must feel all the time, just making sure that her plants are pest free and she's sending out some of her best stuff. And there's just a lot that goes into owning a plant shop. There's a lot that goes into growing that many aeroids at the scale that she is. And yeah, I just have a lot of respect for her. There's just no chance in heck I would be able to do it. So, you know, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of the work and the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into running a plant shop. It is, yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of stress. Uh, I do feel like it's a very fulfilling job. I would imagine that this is Lauren's dream job, but it doesn't come without its stress too. So... Be kind to your local plant shops. Show them lots of love. They work very hard. There's, you know, I love plants so much, but I, I truly could not do that. So anyway, um, now into the last part of this video, I'm going to show you my little haul, which I'm very excited about. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I don't know. I've got like 10 plants, nine plants. I don't remember. Eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna first start with showing you guys some of the like amendments and other non-plant things that I got. Just keep in mind that this stuff isn't going to be available for shipment to the United States. I'll have to confirm if people within Canada can buy it, but if you're local, you can definitely go pick it up at her shop. If you guys have been watching my channel lately, you know that I am dealing with a... I think at this point I can call it an infestation. It's an infestation of spider mites. Um, they're everywhere. They're in my tent, they're on my shelf, they're in my exos, they're all over the place. And when she told me that she had this spider mite spray, I was like, say less. Um, I love the Dr. Doom brand. I have the thrip spray and it works amazing for exposed thrips, not the larvae. And so yeah, I just, I had to grab a bottle of this and I'm just kind of ready to get rid of them. I have been trying to go like the all natural route just by doing scrub downs with Dr. Bronner's soap, uh, sort of more of the like eco-friendly, um, more natural insecticidal soap. And they're just drinking that stuff like juice. So I'm over it, I'm tired. I've burned enough calories trying to get rid of them. So now it's time for the hard stuff. I will keep you guys updated on how this works for me. I'm gonna try it first in my tent because that's where most of my prized possessions are. Uh, luckily, I don't have spider mites that bad on like my philodendron sp columbia, my glorious, my my Florida beauty. It's some of the smaller plants that have spider mites. So um, I just want to get it under control in there before it gets too crazy. So. This one is $18.99 at her shop. She's got a ton of them. So if you're dealing with spider mites, go get some of this. And I did find this spray at some local greenhouses like Garden Works, and it was more expensive than her price. So get it there. The next thing that I'm very excited about is this slow release fertilizer. This is Osmocote. I have heard pretty amazing things about this stuff. It's 14, 14, 14, and it lasts about three to four months. I read about this in an aeroid group. There was someone that was showing like his big, beautiful philodendrons that he's growing inside of his apartment. And everyone was like, what are you fertilizing with? And he just said Osmocote. So 
yeah, she uses this on all of her plants. I can imagine that keeping up with fertilizing with that many aeroids can be kind of difficult. So um, I am excited to try this just because if you watched my video about, I'm gonna put this down because it's making, it's like an instrument. I think it was my new leaves video. If you watch that one, I talk a bit about my fertilizer regimen and why I'm not fertilizing that much in the substrate. So I think that this is going to help me a lot with fertilizing and just kind of how much time that I have to spend on plant care these days. And yeah, she swears by it. She says it's working really well for her. I believe her because some of the things growing in her care are just ridiculous as you would have seen. So she sells these tubs for $9.99, which is pretty comparable to the prices that I've seen from other um, shops like on the East Coast, but I didn't buy from them because I just don't like paying for shipping, you guys. I'm just not, especially like if I'm buying a plant, I'll be more than happy to pay for shipping, but stuff like this that I feel like I can buy it somewhere else, like locally, especially. Yeah, I've just kind of, I've just put it on the back burner. So I was very excited when I found out that Lauren was selling them. Moving on. The one that I'm very excited about is this next one. This is biochar. I first heard about biochar through Amanda, I've talked about Amanda on my channel a few times. She's the one that inspired my entire plant room shelf. I picked her brain about the kind of things that she has in her substrate and she mentioned biochar. So it says that it is used as a soil amendment and has many benefits such as being rich in carbon. Biochar reduces the need for fertilizer and inhibits growth of mildew and molds. I'll throw up some of the benefits of biochar here. Obviously, this is the first time that I'm going to be using it. I'm only going to be using it in my soil, not in passive hydro, because I don't want black powder in my passive hydro vessels. Uh, but I do think for soil, this will be really, really good. And there are some people that have said that using charcoal in soil specifically will kind of alter the pH of your plants. So I'm going to have to be monitoring my pH a little bit just to see if there's any truth in that and see if it affects me. I don't plan on using a ton in my soil, but um, you know, just enough to kind of give it a little spice. But yeah, $5.99 for this Ziploc bag. Very reasonable for me. I find that um, a lot of the times when you want to buy stuff like this, they sell it in like huge massive bags and I don't necessarily need that much. So yeah, I think that this little bag here is perfect. So that was it for the amendments, I think. Again, it's been two weeks since I was at her greenhouse and like kind of picked up everything. So I'm just not very good at remembering. Um, but yeah, let's get into the plants now, which is, I'm sure, the stuff that you guys want to see. I think I'm going to start with the non-aeroids. I have four here. This is a Hoya pneumolarioides. I think I'm saying that right. I actually didn't pick this one. Lauren showed up at my house when she came to pick me up. We went to the greenhouse together, and she gave this one to me. And I think that she, you know, she watches my YouTube channel. She, obviously, we follow each other on Instagram, and she just knows that I kind of have a weakness for these sort of plants. Um, she knows I like them fuzzy, she knows I like them round, and this kind of checks off everything. The leaves that are fully hardened off, they are not that fuzzy. They have a slight fuzzy texture to it, but it's the newer leaves that just feel exactly like a puppy. They feel so nice, and um, this one has pushed out so much new growth since I've had it in my care. You can see up at the top, um, it's really hard to get a plant to focus with me in the background. I feel like I have to go further back. So there's a growth point here. There's a growth point right here, right here, right here. Don't focus on my face. Right there. And it's just kind of popping off everywhere. And I'm very, very excited because I actually really love this one so much. I feel like if I saw this Hoya at her shop, it's something I would have instantly gravitated towards and, and would have wanted to have anyway. So I appreciate how much she knows my taste, um, especially in Hoyas because I'm very new to Hoyas and I feel like she's, she's definitely a Hoya enabler for me. 
and it doesn't help that she has like a whole warehouse full of them so yeah this is the first one i love it very 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 much the second one is this deshidia pneumolaria i think i'm saying that right too um and it's got nice little grass growing from it i don't know if this is uh true for everyone but definitely here in canada i feel like everyone's kind of growing this grass out of their moss it's just like everywhere uh the first time that i saw it was um on alice's plants uh, she would show us pictures of her exos and her moss poles and she just had grass growing everywhere and she used to think it was funny but i was like it makes your space look so wild and cute and whimsical and now it's like whenever i get some like free grass and there's a oh there's a spider nice whenever i get some free grass i'm just <laughs> even that much happier um so anyway yeah this is a dishidia pneumolaria it's so effing cute like they're like little tiny coins and it's so compact and amazing and the second that i saw it i was like i need this like now and i can see like all these roots here i think it's trying to shingle so i might try and allow this one to shingle in my red stuff when i get it set up for the part two of that video i can see some webbing in here but it's not from spider mites i don't know if you'll be able to see it but there is a little spider friend under there which i am more than happy to keep because they eat pests and he's actually kind of cute he doesn't look very scary until it crawls on me i do think i'm gonna get it repotted it seems like it's kind of busting out of here but yeah i just wanted to quickly show you this one i just have such an affinity for just like funky but cute looking hoyas and deshidias or just non-aeroids in general and the second i saw this one my heart just it was like i was getting heart palpitations and it was just calling to me so she has a few of these i was very tempted to take home all of them obviously she wouldn't let me take home all of them but if i could just have like a big trailing pot of this i would ugh, i'd be slain so anywho that's that i'm gonna put it down before that spider crawls on me if it's not already on me this one is not for me this one is for my mom this is a hoya croniana splash uh, my mom, I'm still trying to understand the kinds of Hoyas that my mom likes. I actually FaceTimed her while I was at the shop and I was showing her around. I was showing her all the Hoyas and I was like, pick one. And um, she just said that she wanted something splashy. So I ended up with this. And I think she's going to like it a lot. It's actually really cute. I do have a Hoya Croniana. I think it's a Hoya Croniana splash, but mine is not as splashy as this one. So hopefully... My mom can keep the splash going and it doesn't sort of revert into just like a black leaf. She's going to enjoy this one a lot. The next one, or the last Hoya, is this Hoya Marillii. I keep wanting to call it a Meredithii, I don't know why. I would not normally be drawn to a Hoya like this, but Lauren had her mother plant, which I will insert here in case you missed it in the first part of this video. But hers is huge. The leaves were like the size of my palms. They were so sun stressed. They were just like bright red and beautiful. And like it actually looked so nice on a trellis. I'm not really a trellis person. I don't like putting my Hoyas on a trellis. I would much rather let them kind of just grow wherever they want to grow. But I was sort of feeling this plant on a trellis. It was kind of nice. But yeah, I am going to try and keep this sun stress going because they're so pretty when they're red. And it's honestly just a nice break in the red stuff from all the green leaves, having a Hoya that has like a really, really nice sun stress to it. So I'm gonna keep this one close to a grow light. Hopefully the lights are strong enough that it'll actually sun stress. Um, but yeah, I really, I really love this one. It's so beautiful. The next two are two of the same plants. One is for me and one is for my friend Pearl. So this one is mine. This is a Philodendron Mayoi. Uh, maybe in another video you would have known that I have been constantly talking up and hyping up this plant and telling you guys how much I love it. But mine sort of took a crap recently. Um, I still have the props but they're so tiny and I kind of wanted another big one for my shelf. I don't know if this is just me and my experience, but I find it kind of difficult to keep the size on these things. Um, I feel like you have to get it on a pole right away or else the leaves get really small. 
and I can already see on this new leaf that it looks much smaller than the one that came before it. So I am still on a quest to understand this plant and I'm glad that I kind of got a second chance to start over um, because all I have right now like are a few little stumps. But yeah, this one is mine and then I will show you pearls which is a lot bigger. This one is pearls. It is beautiful. I am just obsessed with these leaves but yeah i just love this leaf shape i love the growth pattern it just looks so wild and it kind of just grows wherever it wants to it's like so neat it's so beautiful it has such a unique shape to it it's like such a statement piece on its own like you don't really need to sort of have this grouped with other plants you can just have this as a standalone plant and especially like once it gets super super big oh they're just so amazing. This one has been in my XO and you can see the humidity is making these aerial roots pop the heck off. So I don't plan on chopping this one because this one is not mine. But yeah, I think that this one's gonna have to get on a pole soon because you guys can see like how small it'll get if you don't baby it. I don't know. If you guys are really good at growing myoids, like very mature, Please give me all your tips because this is a plant that I've just always really loved but have kind of struggled with a little bit. You know, you kind of look at this plant and think it looks pretty easy, but I do have difficulty keeping up the size. I just find that they really love to kind of revert in size. Uh, my gut is telling me that it just needs a pole and I've actually never had any of my myoids on a pole. But I think it's because so many of the myoids that I saw on Instagram and online, they are growing without a pole and they're still so big and beautiful. And I was like, maybe I could do that too, but I can't. Pearl's a very lucky girl because this one was supposed to be mine. The next one I'm gonna show you is, Alexa's always butting in when she's not called for. Um, so the next one is very similar. This one is a philodendron elegans. I've been wanting one of these plants for so long. You can kind of see that the leaf shape is very, very similar to a myoi, but they are different. And I actually feel like I like the elegans a little bit more than the myoi. Look at the situation I've got going. So these aerial roots are getting really long. So I want to just be able to root them. And I just connected a cup here to it. And yeah, now this one is starting to root in there and this one's getting close. So I'm just going to be directing all the roots into here. And yeah, if I ever need to chop it, then it'll already be rooted. But there is a new leaf on the way and it's a very, very decent size. I was very specific in the one that I wanted to choose from the greenhouse. There were elegans that had more leaves than this. They were bigger leaves, but this one had the biggest caterpillar. So I just felt like I would have the most luck getting a leaf of the similar size if I had a nice big caterpillar to work with and I was right. This is one of the plants that I do plan on getting onto a lazy pole very, very soon because I don't wanna see this one revert given that the stem is still a very good size and it's already started kind of rooting in this region, I think I'm gonna be in a good place to get a lazy pole set up. But yeah, I'm just like really, really grateful to have this one. I first saw this on, I think it would have been Tyler's Instagram, your local plant boy. I get a lot of my plant inspiration and um, wish list plants from him. So yeah, really, really happy to have this one. I think now the only one left for me to get is the Philodendron Polypoi. Poidioids, poidioids. The chances of me having that anytime soon though, at the price it's at, is very, very slim to none, but a girl can dream. The next one is a philodendron fibrosum. This one was another gift from Lauren. I didn't choose it myself. She showed up to my house with that Hoya and also with this one. And it's funny because I didn't even know that she knew that I was looking for one. I used to have a fibrosum before, it was a lot bigger. I gave it to a friend. Yeah, I just really like how this one isn't like fuzzy all the way. Um, on more mature specimens it is, but when it's juvenile, it's just like right there. Like, it looks like pubes. It's so funny. Um, but these leaves are really fun. They're not velvety. They're actually very like matte and smooth, but they have like, a scaly texture to it. I, I don't really know how to explain it. 
um, but it feels very, very nice. I'm trying to think of something that it's comparable to in terms of the way it feels and nothing is really coming to mind, but it's so fun because the petioles and the catafils are hairy too, but only very slightly fuzzy. It's like, I'm telling you, it's like pews. This one has started to root now for me in water, so I am going to be moving this to pond soon. I don't want to have too long of water roots, but yeah. I'm very happy to have this one. Thank you, Lauren. This is definitely one that I had on my radar a long time ago and then I forgot about it. And then it wasn't until she showed up with it that I was like, oh yeah, I wanted a fibrosum. So she's just, she's just a mind reader. Second to last one is a Magnificum Verde. And I used to have one of these plants before. The story behind me having my Mag Verde the first time was um, I had told a friend that I was looking for one. I told a friend I was looking for a Magnificum. This was back in like 2019, I think. My friend linked me with Aaron. We weren't really friends yet. I think we were just Instagram friends, but had never really talked or met in real life. So she had a humongous one. It was like a big three or four leaf plant. She sold it to me, she came and she dropped it off and we've been friends ever since. Once that plant got too big for my space, I used to just have it growing out here. And this was before like all of the tents and all of my exos. I only had really small exos at the time. So I gave it to my friend Nick to care for since he had um, a more humid space than me in his plant room. And yeah, I kind of regretted it ever since. I was like, I actually really like this plant. I don't know why I gave it away. I actually like this plant more than the Magnificum. So yeah, when I saw this at the greenhouse, there was a bigger one, but I ended up getting the smaller one just because I don't want to overwhelm myself with too many big plants at once because the next plant I'm about to show you is very big. Yeah, happy to have this. Oh, I want to show you guys the roots. This is pretty much what you can expect when you are buying plants from Lauren. It's dense. I do plan to do a repot soon with some of these. And um, yeah, her plants are freaking rooty. I don't think I've ever purchased a plant from Lauren before that I wasn't spending <laughs> a long time untangling roots, which I find to be a good thing. I would much rather have that than the other way around where you get a plant and there's like no roots at all. So just you've been warned the last plant i'm going to show you i feel like maybe you guys might kind of know what plant it is because i feel like i was showing this so much in my greenhouse in the greenhouse tour behold a crystal mag i got oh i got one of the biggest guys and there were a lot of crystal mags with like pristine new leaves but I don't know why I was drawn to this weird guy with sort of a strange sinus. Um, it's fully hardened now, it's very floppy before, but this is just such a big, humongous, ginormous one. I could literally wrap myself like a burrito in this. Like I'm right next to it. It's like three of my faces in size. I have this one at the very top of my anthurium shelf right now. I think if you guys watched that video, you would have seen a little peek of it. I didn't show it that much, but yeah, I had to take one of these home. I just really love crystal mags. I just love that like in the emergent leaves, they almost resemble like a red crystal. Like it's very, very red in the venation and you can kind of see it here, how it's like really, really red. And then it eventually hardens off, but these anthuriums are really fun. And you guys know how much I love crystallinum. So of course I had to get the hybrid. I'm gonna put this down now because it's actually very, very heavy and flimsy and I don't wanna ruin any of these leaves. Whoever says owning plants is not a workout is wrong. So that was my haul. It wasn't like a huge haul, but I definitely got some good stuff. Um, now I want to just quickly talk to you guys about the shipping process if you are in the United States and you plan to order from Lauren. In terms of where she ships, she ships to the continental US. So unfortunately, if like you're in Hawaii, she can't ship there. There's 
whole other like red tape that comes with shipping to Hawaii as well as taking plants back from Hawaii into the mainland. So continental US only. She is only shipping out on Tuesdays. So if you order on a Wednesday, your order is not going to be shipped out until the following Tuesday. So just keep that in mind. Like if you guys are shopping for friends or you need something in a pinch, make sure that you guys are planning accordingly. She's not going to be shipping every single day. And the reason for that is because she needs to process a phytosanitary certificate for every package. And if you guys don't know what that entails, basically like an inspector has to come and inspect the entire content of a package and have it approved uh, to get the phytosanitary certificate so that it can be shipped. So she can't be doing that every single day, obviously. So Tuesdays are her shipping days. Talking about phyto, phyto is included in the price of your order so it's not like when you order from echo genera or tropicals plants like where you order your plants and then they send you an invoice later showing you all the additional fees and phyto processing and shipping and blah 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 like you'll get everything at checkout and you that's that that's what you're gonna pay every package is going to be shipped express I I know that like when I was in BST groups, there was a lot of people that complained about the state of their plants when it arrived and like somewhere in the comments or whatever, like it was shown that they opted like for first class shipping because it was going to be cheaper. Guys, when you're ordering plants, you got to you got to get it the fastest. It's like you know, paying a little bit more for shipping versus receiving a dead plant, uh, especially with summer coming up, you want that thing to be in transit for the least amount of time as possible so she is only going to be shipping express and speaking of shipping uh you do not need an import permit if you are ordering 12 plants and under and if there are too many plants for one box lauren will contact you via email and you guys can figure out what the options are in terms of getting your plants she's on a pretty strict schedule uh sh you have to book the phyto inspection, but it's not guaranteed that they're gonna come the day that you need them to come or the day that you need them to come before your shipping day. So anything can really change on a dime. That is something that's not really in her control. So keep in mind her shipping days are Tuesday, but if there's any issues with phyto or the phyto person not being able to come out, there is a chance that your package can be delayed. But the good thing is, is she's not packaging anything until it's literally inspected and ready to go. So you don't need to worry about your plant just sitting in a box, not doing anything. And then last but not least, I am so, so relieved to be able to say this, but she is shipping orchid pots. Believe it or not, the most frequently asked question that me and Alice get on our Instagram is where do you get your clear pots? So you would have seen that some of the plants that I showed you were in clear pots. I'm like looking back and forth between the viewfinder and the lens. I don't know where I'm looking. Um, I'm gonna look at you. Okay, so you would have seen in some of the plants that uh, they are in the clear orchid pots. Most, if not all, of my plant with drainage holes are in the orchid pots and there, you just can't really go back to normal pots after you, you've used orchid pots. I just find that they're like the best ones out there. They're clear, obviously you guys know that that's something very important to me. Um, and I, I do know that they're not as available everywhere else like they are here, at least in Vancouver. I remember I went to California, I went plant shopping with my mom and I could not find a single clear orchid pot anywhere. So if you guys have been looking for the orchid pots and don't want to buy wholesale from overseas or you just can't find them, um, take a look at Lauren's website, see what she has available and get yourself some because they are amazing. All right guys, so I think that concludes today's video. If you guys live in the States and you wanna order from her, she's doing her official US launch on Sunday, May 8th at noon. So put it on your calendar and make sure you guys get in there. I can tell you firsthand, and I remember this back in the day, stuff on her website goes quick. She'll post it on her Instagram and I'll be like, I need that now. And then I'll go to her website and it's already gone. And yeah, if you guys buy stuff, Please tag me, I wanna see your hauls, I wanna live vicariously through you. Thank you, Lauren, for sponsoring today's video. Thank you for letting me run around your space and get in your way and move plants around while I squealed and screamed and hollered. 
and just acted like a kid in a candy store. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to give Lauren a follow at North Shore Tropicals on Instagram and you can find her at nstropicals.com. I will link everything in the description. And as usual, thank you guys for being here. Thank you to all of the old and the new subscribers and I will see you in the next one.